Hey guys! Want to know how we go from this to this? Stay tuned. Hey Joy Fam, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary. If you're interested in all things new construction, DIY, home design, please like the video and consider subscribing. All right, Joy Fam, it should come at no surprise to you guys that I have been itching to do a DIY. So before we moved into the house, um, having horizontal shiplap behind the floating shelves at the fireplace was an absolute must for us. Well, we got inundated with other projects and other things going on, and we just had to put this one off to the side, but I cannot stop thinking about it, and we are finally ready. Let's do this, guys. So I'm actually gonna start off by putting some hardware that I got from Wayfair on the cabinet. I wanted some simple finger pulls and that's what you're seeing me do here. And after that, just look, first of all, look at how pretty they are. They're perfect. I didn't want regular like handles or knobs and these were just perfect, modern, sleek and streamlined. It just looks so pretty guys. All right, so I've thought about it and I decided, you know what, let's go ahead and tackle this fireplace and get that horizontal shiplap we wanted. I'm starting off by just taking all of the decor that I had already put up on the fireplace and taking all of those things down and getting them sorted and out of the way. And after that, I'm going to be taking measurements and heading over to the store. So now we are at Lowe's and we are going to be getting our shiplap here. So I actually decided I'm going to use pre-painted MDF. I do not want to have to paint when I'm done putting these up. I wanted something really quick and simple. I'm going to be using um, five and a quarter wide by eight foot um, tall and I'm going to have them cut down here at Lowe's. All right, so I've got my wood. By my calculation, I needed 28 pieces of those eight foot long shiplap. Long story short, I will end up having to come back to Lowe's because I totally forgot that shiplap overlaps and I was gonna be losing some inches there. So we are home and here is all my wood pieces that I'm gonna be using. So the home, um, I actually went to Lowe's. The Lowe's guy was less than amused. <laughs> Um, he definitely was not ex excited about my project as I was, um, but he did help me cut down all the pieces and the different lengths that I needed. And yeah, I'm excited guys. Here comes my best friend helping me pull in all that wood. All right, so our cabinet company actually made a mistake with the floating shelves and they came in too short. So they ended up coming back and putting these trim pieces that I do not love on the ends of the fireplace. So I'm gonna have to take that into account as I put this shiplap up. Because as you can see, when I put the board up here, it's not able to be flush against the wall because of that extra trim piece. So I'm going to have to account for that, measure it, um, cut it out, see if I can get the size perfectly so that it is flush against the wall. And I'm going to have to do this for all the end pieces. So you can see that little portion there at the bottom left that I have marked out is where I'm going to be cutting off. And I actually do this with my, mul um, my multi-tool and I'm going to fit that, to dry fit it, see if it works before I put it in. So I'm sorry for the angle here, guys, but um, I kind of will catch the mistake and it'll get better. What I'm actually doing is putting some liquid nail on the back of the wood, and then I go ahead and put the shiplap up, and I use my um, finish nailer to put a couple of nails on the edge. So I'm only putting nails in the edge pieces where they overlap. So you can see that here. I'm putting some liquid nail on there. I'm gonna go ahead and overlap 
then I put my nails right there in the groove because the groove is then going to be covered up by the next piece of shiplap. And the reason I did that is because like I said, I wanted it to have a finished look. I don't wanna have to go back and paint these or putty it or caulk it or sand it or anything. So this is just a technique I use to make sure that I don't have to do any of that additional work afterwards. So again, put your liquid nail on the back of your wood as additional adhesion and then put all of your holes in the groove. I'm just showing you here, I'm using my multi-tool again to cut out that next corner up top to adhere for that trim piece before I complete the next row. So guys, having all the wood pre-measured and pre-cut at Lowe's really made this process a lot faster because then I didn't have to come home and pull out the table saw or the miter to start, you know, cutting out some of these things. I only had to account for um, those edge pieces for the corners where the trim was to work around that. Everything else is just a matter of putting on the liquid nail and then using my finished nailer to give a little extra support. Guys, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It really encourages us to keep doing more. We really love sharing our home with you and sharing other things that we've learned along the way in our real estate journey. So please leave a comment down below of things that you like or if you have any recommendations based on the technique that I'm using, I'm absolutely open to it. So what you're actually seeing is we keep switching batteries on our power tools because this was just like I was sitting there and I had some downtime and I said, you know what, I'm just going to knock this out. This was not pre-planned or anything. So none of the batteries of our like nailer or um, none of our tool batteries were charged. So we were like sharing batteries and we have like four of those batteries and that shouldn't have been the case. But, you know, we didn't pre-prepare for this. So now I've gone as far as I am gonna really go on that left side. Those of you who know me know I do not care for ladders and heights. So I'm gonna leave that top part for Dio and I'm coming to the right side now to work with him on completing this part. Same technique again, we're cutting out the notches on the very first piece we put on and then we go ahead and do the liquid nail and then extra reinforcement inside the groove with the finished nailer just so we don't have to paint or do anything afterwards. I'm just gonna literally be wiping this down with a rag afterwards just so any fingerprint and things are off, but I'm not gonna have to paint or do anything additional to this. Now when you're working on your fireplace, I would advise you look at the angle of your fireplace and how um, your eyes will be hitting it. We started on the outsides and worked our way in because when you're in front of our fireplace, you don't really see the sides closest to the fireplace. So I knew that my last piece was going to have to be cut. It was gonna have to be a smaller piece and I wanted that smaller piece to kind of be hidden all the way at the corner. Here we go. Guys, that is just so. All right, guys, so everything on the dining table are the items that I initially took off of the floating shelves next to the fireplace. I've kind of separated them into two piles just so I can show you here. Um, the items here on the right side are items that I have picked up from, um, I want to say Target. Yes, Target within the last um, 
three to six months or so. These are items I picked up from Target. And then the other items on this side were items that I own already. Um, these items are either from Target, some are from Kirkland's, just, um, and then some other local decor shops. So I am going to start working. So I have dusted off all of the shelves at this point, wiped off any liquid nail that happened to have gotten anywhere, and I'm just bringing my decor pieces back one by one and styling the space um, in the way that I like. In this area, I really wanted to play um, into the neutral tones. Um, I really like the white against that dark wood, and um, I wanted to really put back those accent pieces that really tie it all together. So for me, I like the functionality of all my candles um, you're gonna see me putting things um, putting essentially creating layers so um, I use some books that I've read previously to create layers so it just gives different depths different dimensions and it really just adds character and beauty to the space when you're looking at everything there um, a little tip is that you don't have to purchase everything from your high-end stores. Because I have really large shelves, my shelves um, are um, 64 inches wide each. And so I, anywhere you see something really cool, just pick up something from there. Do a mixture of different things. Um, so, But you also want to make sure it ties together really well. So kind of have a theme or a picture in the back of your head. Again, if you need help, I always advise you to go to Pinterest um, and see what other people have created to kind of give you some um, to kind of give you some visual aid. But all the items in here are really inexpensive. Um, I would say probably the most expensive singular item is probably like 30 or 40 dollars and do a mixture of things and it's just going to come out beautifully i'm just really loving how this is coming together the fireplace is on Everything is going back in its place. I'm moving some things around, but it's all still coming together just really beautifully. I am loving the shiplop look. I apologize in advance for the lights. <laughs> My wonderful husband's trying to give me the best lighting here, so he's messing with some things in the background. Mm -hmm. I think she meant to say I was trying to save the day. Hmm, what do y'all think? All right, Joy fam, this is my current finished fireplace look. Just wanted to show you guys a close up. Those were those cabinet poles we put on. And now I've taken all my decor pieces and put them back and it's looking so beautiful. I love the white behind the dark wood and the darker fireplace tone. I really, really think it's so pretty. The shiplap just adds this muted elegance behind it. It's there, but it's not in your face and it's not too loud for the space that it's in. It's just really, really pretty. So, some of the things that I would say I still want to do in this space is the pictures that I have at the very top. 
I'm just, I'm not 100% satisfied with them. I think I need something of a larger scale on both sides. So one at the very top there. I wouldn't mind doing a layered look to excuse the glue on my finger. Um, and then the other one here. So my plan is to put gallery lights above there on the very top. Um, as soon as I find the perfect picture and picture size that's going to go up there. If you guys have any recommendations, please let me know. A few just little design tips and hacks. Because I like to read, I don't particularly like to use books I've already, that I've, you know, I'm still reading as part of my decor. So what I do is, um, I just use like old books that we've already read or old books that are lying around the house. And I just use that to create layer and different height sizes for the pieces that I put on the shelving. So that's one really quick tip there instead of going out and buying books. Now, I do have tons of design books and because I'm constantly flipping through them and wanting to read through them, I don't particularly like to put them up on my shelves, but I might put a couple of them up. You guys let me know what you think, but um, I do have quite a bit of other books here that I'm still reading and working through. But if you think any of these would look really cool on the shelf, let me know. Can I think my, can I think my relationship goes? I'm not done reading it. Oh, well, I was done. <laughs> oh man but here you go guys and another design tip if some of the books you have lying around are not of the same color scheme um, you can always kind of just turn the book around the other way to where we're looking at um, the pages versus looking at the edge or the banding of the book. So I do that at times too. And it just gives a different look as well. If you have any questions, recommendations, please do not hesitate to leave us a comment and let us know. If you're new to the channel, once again, my name's Mary, my husband's Dio. We love um, all things new construction, home design, DIY, and lifestyle. Um, please consider subscribing to our channel. Go ahead and like, comment, and share this video. Until next time, guys, thank you for joining us as we work through our home and turn it from a house to a home. Joy fam. Joy fam.